Now this is definitely my favorite part, delivering a portrait to a World War II veteran. The final picture though does have a different composition to when I originally took the photograph. So that's what gave me the idea for this video, where I take you through three different techniques for changing the composition of your photographs. Okay, so for this first technique, this is the final retouch portrait of World War II veteran Gordon Short, where you can see I've actually given the final image a one by one square crop. However, during the actual photo shoot, because of the lack of space, I couldn't get far enough back to allow me to use the camera in a horizontal landscape orientation. I had to use it vertically so that I could get the top of Gordon and the bottom down here included, but that meant that the sides were very tight. So I need to increase the sides of Gordon to give it a little bit more breathing space. The way I'm gonna do that is using the crop tool. But before I use it, I'm gonna come over to the right hand side here and just click on the padlock icon to unlock that layer. Then I'll press C on my keyboard to get the crop tool, come into the top left hand corner here and choose the one to one square aspect ratio. And we can see now it lays this grid down and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key on my keyboard and the option key on Mac or alt key on Windows click in any of the corners and drag outwards to increase the size uh, to the sides. So we'll go for somewhere around about there. I can then click and drag this down just so that Gordon's better positioned, keeping with the rule of thirds here with his face, press enter or return. So now we can see we've got these transparent pixels either side of Gordon. Very easy to fill these in. I'm gonna get my rectangular marquee tool, drag out a selection on the empty left-hand side hold down my shift key and add out another selection over on the right hand side. So both the left and right are now got these marching ant selections around them. I'll then go to the edit menu and choose content aware fill. And then basically what happens is on the left hand side here is where we can tell Photoshop what parts it can and can't use to fill those blank areas in. But you can see over on the right hand side already, it's done a fantastic job. Now ordinarily, if you find that the sides have been filled in with parts of the original picture that you don't want, that's because you need to kind of tell Photoshop, don't use these areas. So you can see here, the green overlay is telling Photoshop what it can use, where the green overlay isn't appearing is where you're saying you can't use this. But it actually did a really good job first of all anyway. You can see just there, it'll spin around a little bit and then it's kind of filled it in. But yeah, fantastic, that's done a really, really good job. We'll click OK and bring that back into Photoshop. It brings it in as a new layer. So what I think I'll do is now just go select, deselect, and I'll just flatten it. So we come to the fly out menu in the top right hand corner there, and we'll choose flatten image. So that's one way that we can increase the size of the background by, and change the composition. Now let's just say that I want to share this particular image on Instagram. So I need to also make this a square crop. Let's have a look here by pressing C on the keyboard to get the crop tool. It's set already to one to one square and you can see that there's actually no way I can fit Jack in our surfer here with a square crop and still have plenty of space above and below. So we need to do something here. We need to change the composition. The way we can do that with this image here is again, come over to the layers panel, click on the padlock icon to unlock that layer. Then I'm gonna get the crop tool and I'm gonna make sure that I still do have that square one to one crop. And what I'll do is I'll hold that shift key down or option key on Mac, Alt on Windows and drag out so that I can increase a little bit more space either side. In fact, we'll go all the way to there like that. I now need to fill these spaces in. Now you could maybe think that using content to where fill would be the best option. So let's just try that. Let's make a selection of the empty left hand side and hold the shift key down and make a selection of the empty right hand side. We'll come to the edit menu and we'll choose content to where fill. Now it does an okay job, but what I tend to find with this one is that once it comes up in the preview on the right hand side here, you can see that first of all, the shadow of Jack here has kind of gone off at a funny angle, so that's not working. And also the bit of the waves, it's just kind of repeating patterns on there as well. So that's kind of not worked. It's just duplicated what's already there, given the shadow a bit of an odd shape. So we can't do that. However, what we can do is this. Let's just get rid of that selection there. So we go select and deselect. And now what I'm gonna do is go to the edit menu and choose content aware scale. Now this is fantastic. We do have a couple of options up in the options bar at the moment, but just check this out. All I'm gonna do is hold down the option key on Mac or alt key on Windows so that when I drag to the left, 
it drags also to the right in the same proportion. So let's have a look, holding that keyboard down, clicking and dragging over to the left. And look what happens. As I move it, we can see that the actual background scene is increasing, but Jack isn't. So Jack is kind of remaining exactly the same proportions, but the background is growing. The shadow is going off in the right direction, and we don't seem to have those repeating patterns on the wave. So this way is working fantastic. So content aware scale. Now, one thing you can also do with content aware scale, if you wanted to, is you could actually, rather than going outwards, you could come inwards. And you can see I can make the background even smaller. And even though the background is getting smaller, Jack again is remaining in the same proportions. I mean, obviously in real world, you'd just do a crop, but it's just to show how powerful that content aware scale is. Now with the content aware scale as well, just one extra thing to mention is what you have available in the options bar at the top of the screen. There's this little icon here, this human icon. And if I hover my cursor over it, you'll see it'll say protect skin tones. So if I now click that down and make it active, when I use content aware scale, it will make everywhere grow except for those areas that contain skin. However, that might not be the best option because look at this. If I now hold down that option or alt key and drag out to the left to increase it, sure enough, the background's growing, but it's going to get to a certain point and all of a sudden, Jack starts growing as well. Now, I don't think Jack would be overly impressed with that. So it's always worth trying it with and without that protect skin tones icon. But content aware scale, really powerful. Now I want to give a shout out to a guy called Victor who posted a comment on last week's video asking if it was possible that maybe using Lightroom to do the cropping could speed that technique up. Well I tried it and yes it does. So here we are then in Lightroom with the final retouch picture of Scott and I've also got the two original images here that were blended together. Now just like before I need to crop out certain areas so I'm going to press R on the keyboard and we're going to drag in from the left hand side that doesn't include the grey background and we'll drag in from the right hand side but the difference this time is I'm also going to crop up from the bottom where the grey background doesn't extend so we'll click and drag up to around about say there let's get the other image again I'll get that crop tool and we'll drag in from the left hand side where there's no grey background and again on the right hand side and we'll drag down this time from the top because the grey background doesn't extend up there either. So let's click down, crop it to around about, say, there. Then what I'll do is I'll come to the very bottom and I'll make sure that both of these images are selected. So I'll click on one, you can see it's highlighted, hold down the Shift key and click on the second one so they're both highlighted. We'll then come to the Photo menu and choose Edit In merge to panorama in photoshop you also have here photo merge panorama that's not the one to use we're going to go to edit in merge to panorama in photoshop now when i click on that photoshop starts to open up and i have the photo merge properties here now on the left hand side it says layout that's set to auto by default we'll just leave that there the important part is in the middle down at the bottom we've got a tick where it says blend images together that's definitely what we want to do so we'll put a tick in that checkbox. Also at the bottom here, we've got one that says content aware fill transparent areas. Let's put a tick in that checkbox as well. And then we'll click OK. Now obviously doing this technique before what we did was we had to align those layers before we could merge them. We've not had to do that in this one. So now you can see there's quite a bit of activity going on. Photoshop is now blending those two images together. It's lining them up and it's going to fill the gaps in as well automatically saving a ton of time as you can see right now so that has worked exceptionally well now following on from last week's video I also got asked how did i make that fake skirting board to fill the gap in between the background and the floor well here's how okay so what i'll do then is i'll click to add a new blank layer to the top of the layer stack and let's just rename this one to skirting board and then we'll zoom in on scott somewhere around about there I'll then come over to the toolbar and choose the rectangular marquee tool and just drag out an oblong. Something like that will be just fine for now. Then we'll go to the edit menu, choose fill, and we'll, from the drop down menu here it says contents, we'll choose 50% grey and click OK. We'll now get rid of the active selection. I'll then come to the toolbar and choose the dodge and burn tool so we can add the highlights and shadows 
to create that illusion of shape, depth and dimension. So I'll choose the dodge tool first of all. In the options bar at the top of the screen, the range is set to mid-tones and the exposure at 40%. Let's just click on the settings here on the left-hand side to make sure that none of these are checked. That's fine. And then what I'll do is I can use the right and left square bracket keys to make the dodged and burn tools bigger or smaller. Let's just zoom in just a little bit more. So I'm going to make a smallish kind of highlight going across the top. And the way I can do that is I can click down on the left-hand side hold the shift key down and click over on the right hand side and it will join those two up together. Let's make a bigger one a bit further down. So I'll use that right square bracket key to make a bigger highlight, say somewhere around about there. So on the left hand side, I'll press down, hold down the shift key, click on the right hand side, it'll join those two together. And we'll do just a slightly smaller one a bit lower down. Click on the left hand side, shift click on the right hand side. Now where there are highlights, we'll also add shadows. So I'll come to the toolbar, make sure that now we're using the burn tool Range is set to mid-tones, exposure 40%. Click to make sure the settings aren't on. That's fine. And then wherever there's a highlight, we'll have a shadow next to it. So in the top one here, I'm going to click underneath. Hold the shift key down, come over to the right-hand side and click to add one just there. Let's add a bigger one just in the bit just here. So on the left-hand side, I'll press down, hold the shift key down like so. And then finally on the bottom, a smaller one, we'll click down and we'll click down the right hand side then what we can do is just get the uh, transform we'll go edit and we'll go to free transform let's just make that compress that down just a little bit more can you see now how those highlights and shadows kind of give it a little bit of shape actually it looks like it's coming forward and going back it's that illusion of shape let's just drag that into position on the left hand side and then we'll go to edit and again, free transform, click and drag it all the way across like so. And I guess what we could do then is just in the right hand side on the layers panel, make sure we're clicking on the layer containing Scott. We can go to select subject so that now Scott and the uh, the wooden part of this, um, I'm going to call it a spear, but it's not called a spear, is selected. I'm then going to click on this skirting board layer, hold down the option key on Mac, alt key on Windows, and then add a layer mask. And when I do that, it kind of gives the illusion now that that skirting board is going behind Scott. So there you go, another week, another video. If you've liked this, if it's been useful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button because that's a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's all I've got for you. I will see you next time. When, when was I Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd do a better job. <laughs> <laughs>